Hi, this is Sound Advice. My name is Yolanda Charles and I'm going to talk about musicianship and creating bass lines. So musicianship is one of those areas that I feel people do not pay much attention to in terms of a thing. Um, we focus a lot on our technique, uh, achieving goals, you know, being able to play that lick or the thing we're practicing or being able to remember a song, the arrangement, performance of it and all the rest of it. But we don't necessarily think about how we're playing and how we're communicating what we play. Uh, musicianship for me is a major part of what makes uh, you a good musician. So good musicianship, good musician. It's less about the technique uh, once you've met the basic requirements of being able to play your instrument, um, which is, you know, in time, uh, playing the right thing at the right time, remembering the arrangement. Um, so after that stuff has been achieved, then or as you're learning it, it's a good idea to focus on the more subtle influences uh, that you will bring or that is happening around you that you can interpret and learn how to communicate with and to others. So one of those things that you can focus on is, uh, first of all, listening. Everybody says this um, and there's a reason for it. The importance of listening is all about how you interpret, communicate and understand what's going on around you. So this can actually extend to an audience as well. Um, you can communicate with your audience as well. But in terms of a musical sense, uh, communicating between band members, communicating your ideas through your instrument to band members, um, and interpreting and communicating your song to others is all part of your musicianship um, skill, let's say. So one of the things that I like to do is to record myself playing something that I've been practicing uh, if it's something that's tricky, uh, I have had students in the past, I will say to them, record yourself at the beginning of learning how to play that that thing um, and then listen back and see if you can hear any improvements. Also, you can hear what's not working in the riff if, as a bass player. Um, you can hear whether there's buzzing going on, whether you're letting notes ring, strings ring unintentionally. Uh, whether you've got extra noises that are, are not intended. That sort of thing creates a communication of your bass line um, in the way that you wish to be heard. So if there's anything unintentional, you need to get rid of those. And the only way you're going to be able to know if they're happening is if you're actually listening to yourself. I really would say that one of the best ways to, to do that is to listen back to yourself recording um, uh, recorded and then you know then you can sense or just get a better understanding of what other people are hearing because you know you're not always listening to yourself in a fine tuning sense now it's not that important really when you're on stage to worry about that stuff this is all for practice um, but it is really useful to understand how you're making a bass line feel um, and where it is in in the actual uh, music is it where you intend it to be um, so that's one part of it. That's uh, fine tuning your um, touch. Uh, that's one of the musicianship skills you can look at. Another one is good taste. Good taste is one of those things that's subjective. So we all have our own individual uh, taste that we think is better than another choice. And it's not the same for everybody. So we could disagree about what good taste is. But, um, but having a finely tuned musicianship skills is having more of a universal sense of what is expected from your instrument, what uh, works in the music in a musical sense. So it's not even what you want to play sometimes, it's about what works. So sometimes something you want to play doesn't work. So you have to not play it, even though you want to. Your taste would say, hey, I really want to play this thing because it's what you prefer. But your taste in terms of the music and what it needs will tell you maybe that it's not such a good idea to put that lick in at that point. So that's good taste development. Um, how you can do that to start with, I would say, is um, learn how to write bass lines. So a lot of the time we're learning other people's bass lines. We're learning, um, uh, you know, covers and we're learning bass parts that were put down on a record by somebody else and you're just learning it, interpreting it for the live band. 
Um, but that that way you're learning somebody else's taste and that's useful. It's a useful tool to teach you how to be a good bass player. But the best bass players write their own bass lines too or can write bass lines that really work well in a song and remember are memorable. Uh, they're part of your identifier or your your signature sound. And we all love those bass lines, classic bass lines that um, everybody knows. But you could also write one yourself. How you do that is you develop a stronger sense of musicianship, what works within a song. It also employs uh, taste and it involves listening to yourself and understanding what works in the song. Um, it's musicianship that gives you that as opposed to studying or copying others or... Um, even technique and all of those things it's actually employing good musicianship will help you shape a good quality bass line so you can start by very simple chord structure say a one four five say in g so g major c major to d major and just try and write a bass line start with um i'm not going to put on a metronome so we've got internalized timing so Those are the three chords. Now, how you can do this is to have accompaniment of chords on recording or just with friends and you're jamming or whatever. Get those sense, get those chords agreed and then get a sense of what you might want to play. But don't just rush in by playing loads of notes straight away. Think about finding the space to create a bass riff um, that will work with whatever's playing. Now, we don't have a reference right now uh, of a drummer and a keyboard or guitarist. So... We're just going to shape a bass line based on gradually creating a kind of riff. Really, really simple, basic stuff. First thing we've done is then the first example is just the roots. So now we're just going to increase the number of notes gradually to create a bass line. So it's two notes per bar, just the octaves. Now we're going to put the thirds in. So it's still those same chord changes. We've just increased a little bit of melody in the bass riff. Now we can try something else. That is a bass line. It's very quietly, subtly becoming more melodic. It's not busy, but it has more movement in it now. And as you increase the notes that you choose to play or increase the note choices you'll work out what works really well with what's going on with the band this is part of how you develop uh, a bass line utilizing good taste um, that will be you employing musicianship and you're doing that by communicating either receiving communication from the other band members to wait to find out what's going to work from the bass or you are communicating to others i'm gonna take my time and find a, a nice sweet riff for you to play alongside that's you not charging in and um, giving them too much of a headache about trying to fit their rhythms in around your mile a minute notes so that's one element of how to develop um, a, a bass line written with good taste and that is you employing musicianship so it's your communication it's your listening it's your employing good taste when you're coming up with bass lines it's listening to yourself it's just to keep on track about the noise that you're making, whether it's clean, whether the sound that you're creating is deliberate, intentional, um, and that you've left space for ideas to develop within a given um, song based on what's needed in the band. Uh, that is um, one element or a few elements of what I consider employing good musicianship, uh, working with others. Thank mm -hmm. you.